All right, so this is a review video for the last couple of questions uh, from the review packet that we worked on in class. Uh, this is just a screenshot of the data table. I know it looks a little bit different. There's, you know, there's something missing up here. It's just how it's looking on my uh, computer screen. Uh, but we can still work with it. We know that this is a position in meters, and we know that this is time. Uh, this is time in seconds. Uh, so what we really care about in this question is about the velocity. So the first part of it says explain how the group could use the data from the table to find out how fast the orb was traveling when it was first shot upward. This might be something that you can answer first or you can worry about the graph first and that might help you out with your explanation. <clears throat> but in or order to graph the velocity, we're going to use our position and our times. Now these times are very, very close to each other. Now, technically speaking, when something is shot up in the air, it is accelerating. But since these uh, times are so close to each other, we can say that the uh, acceleration doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with what's going on. Uh, so we're going to use our velocity as change in position over change in time. <clears throat> now, in this case, change in position is always going to be the exact same number. Uh, and our, it's our time that's different, which uh, makes it a little bit... Uh, different from what we had before. So here we're going to use uh, 0.5 meters and divide it by 0.07 seconds and we're going to get 7.14 meters per second. Okay, and if you were to continue doing that for the next interval you would get 6.25 meters per second. The next one you would get 5.56 meters per second the next one 4.17 meters per second, and the next one 3.85 meters per second. Now the weird thing about plotting this is that uh, what a number of you got caught on last time was that technically this speed is not associated with zero or with 0.07, it's associated with in between. So like this one would be plotted uh, at a time of 0 0.035 seconds. That's where that would be plotted. In between the next one, that would be 0.11 second. In between the next one, would be 0.195 seconds. And you can keep on going, uh, 0.3 seconds, 0.425 seconds. This is just uh, midway in between those time intervals. So that means we can take this and we can plot it. So here is a plot that I've already made. Uh, it looks a little bit different than the one that you have on your paper, but it's it's still a grid, so you can still work with it. So the first thing that we're dealing with is 0 0.035 seconds, and it's at 7.14, so it's somewhere up here. Somewhere right there. Okay, the next one is uh, at 0 0.11 seconds, and it's at 6.25. So here's 6, 6.5, be somewhere right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plot the rest of them, and I suggest that you can pause the video and you can do it yourself as well, so that we can see uh, and compare data. Okay, so you can see that I have my plot in here. Uh, now the idea is that we would draw a best fit line and that best fit line would have to go through as many plots as possible and so there's my best fit line that goes through as many plots as possible uh, and then the idea is we are interested in the initial velocity well, the initial velocity would be right there at the very top and according to my graph that's about 7.3 ish okay 7.3 ish is the uh, the initial speed right 7.3 meters per second. That is VO for this thing being launched up into the air. And then the next question is, uh, what is the acceleration? So the acceleration would be, you know, take a two points that lie on the line and uh, figure out what the rise over run is, right? Because it's a velocity versus time graph. Now what I did was I plugged this, uh, this, these points into my calculator and did a linear regression on the best fit line. And what I got was that the acceleration was a negative 8.79 meters per second square. Now you can use the graph on the screen, you can use the graph that you make, and it would be slightly different, but you know, take a look at that number. It's fairly close to 9.8, it's within 10%. It's within 10%. And in fact, the uh,
best fit line of the calculator gave a vertical intercept of 7.26 meters per second. So the equation then would be velocity equals a negative 8.79 meters per second squared times t plus 7.26 meters per second or 7.3 whatever you're talking about whatever your your value is that would be the equation for that line and if you go back and explain how they would find it you can literally say well you can plot the points of velocity versus time and figure out what uh, the vertical intercept is that would be the initial velocity of the ball that's being launched up or you can say you can just plot the position versus time data and uh, draw a tangent line at the very beginning of that graph to see what the initial slope was. Uh, that is again something that you can uh, you can do. Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the next one. Okay, and we have car one and car two. So we know that car one has an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. Neither one of them have an initial position uh, that's a number. It's just zero. Uh, we know that car 2 has an initial velocity of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. No, excuse me, meters per second, because it's velocity. Uh, and that means that one of them has a constant acceleration, while the other one's just a constant velocity, because it has, the car 2 has an acceleration of 0. So if we're looking at what these uh, uh, equations look like, well, our position for car 1, our position time equation is 1 half times 1.2 meters per second squared times t squared, or its velocity equation would be v equals uh, 1.2 meters per second squared times t. All right, this is just coming from your kinematic equations. This one's pretty much the first equation on the green sheet without a vo, because the vo is zero. This one would be the second one, again, without an xo or a vo, because both of those are zero. Over here on car two, we would have uh, x equals, again, we don't have an xo, but we also don't have an acceleration, so that means it would just look like 0 0.8 meters per second times t. And our velocity would just be the same velocity over and over, 0 0.8 meters per second, and that's it. So that's going to help us plot our points when it comes to our two graphs. So here's a position versus time graph. Okay? We know that one of them should be linear, the other one should be quadratic. So if we're talking about the linear one, so that's car 2, I'm going to do that one in purple because that's what I did over here. Okay. So car 2, every time we go up by 0.1, we're going to go up by 0.8 meters per second, or excuse me, meters. Do I have that right? Uh, looking at car 2, so every time we go up by 1 second, we're up by 0.8 meters on car 2. Okay, so that means that 2 would be at 1.6, which would be somewhere around here. Okay, at 3, it would be at 2.4, would be somewhere around here. Okay, and you notice, you should, if I have plotted them right, that it should be a pretty linear line, and I can draw it, you know, something like this. Okay, 1.8, 2.4, you know, it's, it's somewhat close. I'm sure yours is probably a little bit better. Let me see if I can get that line in purple. All right, so there's uh, there's that one. Now the other one would be uh, in red, but it's going to be a quadratic. It's going to be quadratic, so we uh, will have to make sure that our uh, speed goes up as a quadratic. And after one second, we can see one second in here would just be one squared. One point two divided by two is point six. So at one second, it's at point six right here. Okay, at two seconds, we're looking at four. 4 uh, multiplied by 1.2 gives you 4.8, but you still have to divide it by 2, so that gives you 2.4. So at 2 seconds, we're already up here at 2.4. And then at 3 seconds, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 1.2 is, uh, oh man, what is that, 10.8. 10.8 divided by 2 is 5.4. So we are already off the chart by 3 seconds. So that means we have a quadratic that looks something like that to get all the way up to 5.4. And there's our, our two graphs for position versus time. Now that one's a little bit uh, harder because you have to kind of freehand that quadratic. Our velocity versus time graph isn't that bad, especially since 
we know one of them is just going to sit at point 8 all the way across, and that's car 2 in purple. And the other one will just be a linear line that goes from 0, and by the time by the time it reaches 3 seconds, we know it's going uh, up by 1.2 every single time. Uh, so we're looking by 3 seconds, it would be up at 3.6. So 3.6 is going to be somewhere around here. All right. And now we have two different intersection points. Okay, We have an intersection point that is right here, but notice how that in goes in between one and two seconds, okay? And that is where you are at the same position. Same position. Okay, while the one over here is where you are at the same velocity. And notice how you get uh, to this, be the same velocity before one second, so that means this intersection point and this intersection point are not at the same uh, time. So you end up getting the same speed before you get to be at the same position. So if we're looking at some of the questions here. Uh, who is faster at 0.05 meters? Well, let's take a look at our position versus time graph. 0.05 meters is like right here. So who's got the bigger slope? Well, it seems to me like car 1 has got the bigger slope, so that would be car 1. Who is ahead at 0.5 meters? Who gets to 0.5 meters first? Well, that would be car Two. Car two looks like it has the a uh, looks like it's there before car one. Who is faster at one point five meters? One point five meters is up here, and that would definitely have to be car one. Car one definitely has a higher velocity. Uh, who gets there first? Well, that's kind of a toss up. It depends on where that uh, intersection actually happens, and the, it turns out the intersection happens at uh, just over one. Uh, meter, so my plot is actually pretty bad, uh, and so that means car one is technically ahead. You can put these equations into your into your calculator and actually figure out where the the uh, intersection points are, both in time and in uh, distance or velocity. So it's a matter of just putting these two in, finding that intersection, and putting these two in. Uh, sorry, here we go. These two in, and putting these two in, and finding out where the intersections are, and that will give you where the velocity are, and I did it again. These two, there we go. These are both our position ones, and these are both our velocity ones. So by putting these two equations in your calculator simultaneously, you can figure out where the intersection point is and figure out when it is that they actually uh, intersect both at uh, time and distance and also getting time and velocity, the intersection down here. I hope this helps. Uh, good luck on the test tomorrow, and we'll see you then.